Welcome to Upfront Den Under. I'm Chloe Morgan. And I'm Rachel O'Sullivan. Me and Rachel have both been at the stadium. It's been absolute carnage. It's been one of the better games, I think, that we've seen England in. Obviously, we walked away with the win, taking us through to the semi-finals. It was 2-1 this evening. Santos in the 44th minute with the first goal, which looked scary as fuck. Not going to lie. Absolutely scary as fuck. And then Hemp coming back with the equaliser just before half-time in the extra time of the first half in the 45 plus sixth minute. I mean, Rach, talk me through your thoughts and feelings in the first half. What we saw was a, a sort of a formation, a player selection that had returned pretty much back to the sort of China days. Um, a sort of three at the back with, you know, Bronze and Daly on the wings. Uh, pressing up front, we had Alessia Russo and also Hemp. Um, we looked quite solid. I think the biggest threat for me seemed to be Linda Caicedo on the left-hand side against Jess Carter. I think sometimes she was caught out, but that don't get me wrong, I think Jess Carter had did have uh, ended up having quite a decent game, but I think there was a couple of times that I was thinking is Caicedo going to outpace Carter and this is where the, the attack's going to come from. But Rach, what were your thoughts? First half, what, what are you thinking apart from the elation? Well, I think the Caicedo thing on the left-hand side was more to do with Lucy Bronze get it being so high and Pushing Jess up. Carter having to cover for that yeah um, so I actually think it was probably more to do with that I think um, Lucy lost the ball a couple of times but overall I think this formation worked better in this game than it did in the last game against Nigeria I thought Walsh was better um, you know I did wonder if we were going to see some changes obviously Toon came in um, didn't have the best game I thought Lauren Hemp was excellent I thought um, they really struggled to handle her I thought she was player of the match I know Lessie obviously got the winning goal but I thought Lauren Hemp really did a job I thought she did she managed to kind of be wide but also be direct at this like during the game I think in the China game she was really direct in the Nigeria game she was far too wide because they weren't getting any ball through the middle and I think she kind of managed to balance the two of those things um, mm-hmm. in this game. And I think, yeah, the Columbia um, back line really struggled to deal with her. So I thought in the first half they did well and it felt like the goal kind of came a little bit against the run of play. Um, and what a goal it was. Like, I don't know about you, do you think that was a goal? Like, was Mary Earps in the wrong to be kind of get her angles wrong for it to be able to float over her like that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think she received quite a lot of criticism for it. And I, when I was looking at it, because I couldn't quite work out whether it was a fluky-ass shot or whether it was a cross. And, like, she got some backspin on the ball, which to me suggests that it was supposed to be more of a cross than a, than a shot. Um, and I think Mary, even though... I mean, she wasn't that far off her line. She was about half a metre off her line. And I think, um, obviously, she'd backpedalled. And she was at the highest point of her jump. And I think it was just the, 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 the kind of unfortunateness of the trajectory of the ball is that it sort of hit peak at the top of her jump and then sort of dipped down into the goal. So I don't actually think that was a big error. Um, but everyone sort of was sort of saying, oh, OK, well, you know, it's an error of the tournament. And then I'd, I'd been absolutely raving in the game previously, Australia, France, and we'll go and talk about that in a second, about the amazing, um, you know, French goalkeeping display that we've just seen. And then I go on to this, and everyone's like, oh, okay, well, you've got Earps making the error. And then at the other end, a couple of minutes later, you've got Perez um, slipping up and obviously, like, spilling the ball as well. And everyone was like, oh, God, well, look, we've had two massive goalkeeping errors. And I was like, that's not what's happened at all. Like, and also, like, just take a minute, okay? It's a very highly pressurised game. Like, everyone, you know, it's like, just... just you know, come on. The Columbia fans giving absolute beans in the crowd. The stadium, the atmosphere, it was just like a sea of yellow shirts. I was in the press pit. There was um, Colombian fans throwing yellow balloons down into the press pit. as like top banter, which I thought, you know, great. And also, in the FIFA media press room, they were serving empanadas, em, empan, empanadas on yellow empan, napkins. Empanadas, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I've got to agree with you. I think in the first half, like, I think we were... Dominant. I think there was a part of me that felt quite calm in this game. Um, I felt like the goal was coming and the, the the Columbia goal was completely against the run of play. And I thought, OK, if we get one back before half time, I'll get back into feeling quite calm against it. And we and we did. It wasn't a really unfortunate Perez error. Obviously, then um, Hemp followed it up. Tenacious uh, in getting that follow Loves up. Loves a toe and poke. I think, yeah. In- it was, England um, fucking love a toe poke. 
Well, I thought it was going to be Russo for that because she was there in and around the keeper. And then, like, Hemp just bombs out of nowhere. She's like, no, Russo, this is my bloody goal. Um, and then when they went into half time, obviously, that completely changes the atmosphere. All they've got to do is obviously get the goal back or get another goal. And then it's, and it's for the win. And I think we did deserve it. I mean, the Nigeria game, I can't say with confidence that we deserved that win. But this game, I feel like we, we deserved it. It wasn't the most amazing game that we ever had, but I do feel like there's an upward trajectory of our performances. Um, I'll tell agreed? you what I didn't enjoy. Okay. The last 10 minutes plus extra time. This, like, I understand game management, but my God, mm-hmm. like, I just feel like England are better than trying to just delay, delay, delay. Like, they were literally up Colombia's end of the pitch and could have tried to score a goal. But no, they were like, no, we're going to fanny around to the corner with the ball, lose possession over and over. It is the most stressful thing to watch. And I'm sure like it's all part of football and game management, but I just fucking hate time wasting. I hate it, especially when they do it so early and think, oh, 10 minutes. And then they're like, yeah, we're going to have eight minutes of extra time. You're like, oh my God, it's basically 20 minutes. Like that's nearly a third of the game that you're just like, not a third of the game, but like you're just playing around with the ball. Like You're just like, just like you're good enough to just go and attack or like you know not just just I can't be dealing with this stress I get like heartburn like I came out of the fucking game and my heart was absolutely racing because I have to deal with this stupid extra time bullshit the Euros is bad enough stop it that's what I'm wow. saying wow stop it but for me I felt quite calm about it I thought that oh, as soon as we got God that goal for half time I was like I was like fairly chill um and then obviously I mean Russo not really been finding her score in form. Uh, has only scored one goal previously in the tournament. And then what I found quite frustrating in this game, even so, is that we could have had the the game wrapped up fairly early on had it been for a couple of like better targeted headers headers from Russo and Daly. The worst thing was is that they were both getting into like incredible areas, doing these incredible leaps, getting on the end of these deliveries that were being whipped in, and then just heading it straight at Perez. And I was like. All you have to do is find a space that Perez isn't in and aim for that space. Um, and I find that really frustrating. And obviously, like, then, then you get Russo with the ball at her feet and then she converts the chance. And weirdly enough, there was there was a sort of a lack of almost tenacity in that goal because Stanway had slipped the ball through for Russo to run onto. It kind of got caught a little bit under her feet. And because of that, she then, for a split second, didn't go after the ball and then went after the ball and then slotted it past Perez and then following that I mean the drama continued because then Perez seemed to get something in her eye she was then subbed off you had a 20 year old replacement keeper coming in making her first international debut and this is like I mean Perez after making the slip not saving this goal getting an eye issue and then it it just sort of I, I think yeah, I felt really sorry for her because Perez had also had an unbelievable tournament. I mean, she was second in the goalkeeper stats for, for saves behind Mary Earps before this tournament. Um, she was on 92% of the saves and Mary Earps on 100%. So, yeah, this was a, a bit of a goalkeeper matchup as well. And um, I think Perez has had... Yeah, she, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad game. It was a, it was a fuck-up, for sure. No, but I also think Colombia like, can go out of that game with their heads held high. Like It's one of those kind of just both sides going for it. I feel like Colombia were just going for it more. And that's maybe something that's maybe ever so slightly lacking in England's performances sometimes is that absolute gunning for it. And I think sometimes England like to take the pace out of the game. And I think Mm -hmm. they're actually at their flowing best when they're playing quickly, like that first half against Denmark, that match against China, when they're playing quick passes and, and they give the opposition very little time to actually almost like they're chasing shadows. And I think England sometimes in these high pressure moments take the speed out of the game. And that's when it gets nervy for us because it almost takes the pace away and it feels like they're not kind of gunning for it, which is what I felt like Colombia were doing, particularly in the last 10 minutes plus injury time. They were throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it. And, you know, at the end of the match, much like Nigeria, seeing the players come together, seeing the England players go over to the Colombia players and kind of really like pat on the back, hand on the shoulder, a real kind of respect and acknowledgement that this was a battle that the two of them had gone through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I think it was Sophie tweeted, like, unfortunately in sport, there always has to be winners and losers. And like, you see that your Nigerias, your Colombias having an unreal tournament, you know, and to have to see them go and they're so sad and they're heartbroken. And um, it just felt like, yeah, it was a real, like real battle out there today. 
Um, and it was sad to see the Colombians so sad. Their fans have been amazing. The passion that they sing their anthem, the kind of the the speed and kind of intensity in the way they play, they've been um, a joy to watch this tournament. They really have. Like it was annoying actually to kind of see the the passion and excitement that they were bringing from the very first minute. I mean, I have never seen a national anthem sung with so much vigor. It was insane. The entire when that goal went in, the entire stadium exploded like there was no roof on the stadium so like it would have taken the bloody roof off like just as it was just trumpets going off like they had like Colombian music playing it was like a festival in there just a sea of yellow shirts everywhere it was um yeah it was absolutely brilliant but yeah obviously it's come it's come a it's an end to the Colombian tournament and now we have the three European teams in the semi-finals England, Sweden and Spain. And then obviously we take on Australia on Wednesday, which is going to be one hell of a matchup. Yes, Rach, go on, go on. I also do think it's worth mentioning the fact that Lauren James only got a two game ban for her red card, which I was not disappointed in, but I think Mm -hmm. she should have gotten three. And I think based off the red card um, for the Nigeria player in the first game that was upgraded to a three game ban, and that was in tackle. That was kind of a reckless challenge, but she was going for the ball. I was really surprised that Lauren James only got the two match ban. Um, I thought she was going to get three and should have got three. So should England progress, which is going to be a bloody hard job, should they progress to the final, she will be back for that. Which is amazing. But yeah, I've got to agree with you. I, there doesn't seem to be a lot of understanding or clarity around why that decision was made for one player and, and not the other. Maybe perhaps... FIFA took into account, obviously, the apology and also the fact that I think it, it looked as if maybe Lauren James had spoken to Alozi behind the scenes because there was some kind of understanding that Alozi seemed to be at peace with what had happened. So it's I can only assume it's, it's not good enough. Yeah, it's not good enough. But it shouldn't come into the it shouldn't come into the 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 decision. The decision's based on what happened on the pitch. Oh, and, for sure. And I just don't think. Yeah, I was just quite surprised by that. But, you know, that will be if England get through. And like I said, it's going to be hard because that Australia-France game, like we just can't seem to have a normal 90 minutes of football in this tournament anymore. And that's, look, it's fine. It's very exciting. When you're covering it, it's quite stressful. Oh, Um, it's disgusting. And I don't know about you, but like I was up in the press box during the penalty shootout. So we'd watch the first half of the Australia-France game. I'm guessing that's where we're going next. And uh, watched it in the, the bar right next to the stadium, which is, full of England fans, full of Australian fans. And over to the right of that bar, there was a big like kind of park right next to it where they put up another screen. And the place was absolutely rammed. And you could the bar was kind of down a, a dip a little bit. And you looked up and everyone was just surrounding the, the, the park, surrounding mm-hmm. the bar, looking at these big screens. It was incredible, the amount of people. And like, you can attest to this, Chloe, this stadium is not like central Sydney. This is like mm-hmm. a 25, 30 minute drive from Sydney. All of these people were out watching the match. Then we went up, got ourselves settled in the press room, go up to the press room, but the penalties are on. And I'm like, it's cool. I'll watch the penalties. I'll go down. I'll have like 40 minutes or whatever before I kick off. No, these penalties went on for fucking ages. And I was like, do you know what? Actually, I've loads of pictures of England, of the England team walking out. I want to see what the hell happens in these penalties. And the press room was so tense watching these. Every time you think it's won, it's not. It's saved. Oh my God. Like it was such a kind of up and down and up and down. Oh my God. And that was before our game even started. 